Hello! Today's video is a little bit of a PSA, I guess, in particular aimed at the women who watch my channel. And it's about, I guess, the people that you try to date or the people that try to date you and who you really accept into your love life and into your relationships. I think I'm quite lucky in that I don't think I've ever actually really dated a loser per se, but I've come close a couple of times and then thank god I snapped out of it before anything happened but not everyone is so lucky I think I've noticed this a lot actually in making new female friendships and of course the main thing that we talk about is our love lives and dating and the types of people that we go for, who we find attractive, that sort of thing because the feminine is naturally drawn towards love and is preoccupied with love essentially. So since joining this new female friend group I have noticed, and no disrespect to my friends, but that girls who I consider very smart, very beautiful, very capable tend to go for guys who are not or perhaps not their equal counterpart or who treat them unwell or who disrespect them or don't give them attention or don't treat them the way that they deserve to be treated. And I know that I myself have been kind of a victim of this mentality in the past, kind of believing like, oh, I can change him. If I just play hard to get, then maybe he will become obsessed with me or worrying why he isn't showing you enough attention or obsessing about where he is, what he's doing, that kind of thing. Because inevitably that is the kind of stuff that you do if you are pining after someone, I guess. Unless you are someone who I think has kind of done the self-work and self-assessed and sort of consciously thought about the way that they approach relationships, then I think people tend to obsess a little bit. And I think this is true of both avoidant and anxious attachment styles. Both have a tendency to sort of idolize the other person, it's just that the avoidant tends to shy away from the other when their partner or the person that they desire reveals themselves to not be that kind of ideal person. But I guess what I'm really trying to get at is why on earth are people dating below their standards? I know rationally that it's probably a result of attachment styles and what your childhood was like and what you really come to expect and maybe also a little bit of the modern dating market and the lack of things like chivalry or gentleman-like behavior. It's a dying breed, I think, of men that are respectful, but I'm aware that this is me pretty much lamenting the loss of traditional men in the dating market. And I think it's important to note, and I forgot to note in this video, that if you want someone with traditional values, like someone who looks after you or provides for you, or even to some degree treats you with chivalry and respect, then you have to become the kind of female counterpart of that. It's not all on men to be gentlemen if you do not act like a lady per se. That doesn't mean that we as women have to settle necessarily. If you are someone who is feminine at their core, and almost all people are either feminine or masculine at their core and then other behaviours are sort of learned or emulated due to society and stuff like that but if you are someone who is feminine then you in a relationship are the prize you are what he gets if he works hard enough, if he has earned you it's not that you are supposed to sit there and think how can I achieve him you as the feminine are almost like the reward for the work that he should be putting into gaining your attention, into chasing you. Because naturally, the feminine sort of attracts and the masculine chases, and that is why it's so uncomfortable and so fruitless to you when you start to chase the masculine, because there's sort of a reversal of dynamics that creates almost a depolarized relationship, if that makes sense. There is a reason that I remember I used to be super into like manifestation, and girls would repeat to themselves, I don't chase, I attract, what belongs to me will simply come to me. And it's true, when you are in a mindset of abundance and a mindset of I deserve a good relationship, you don't think to yourself, what can I do to convince this person to love me? What can I do to make them treat me right? No, if someone treats you wrong, you clap your hands and you say bye, <laughs> like that's it. Think about it, if someone you weren't attracted to treated you the same way that you accept in people that you do find attractive, you wouldn't even give a second thought to them. So why do you take it from someone that you are attracted to? I'm going to quote the most random thing here, but I remember reading The Perks of Being a Wallflower when I was 14 or so, and the quote that stuck with me the most, or that I guess I thought was the deepest thing ever when I was 14, was, you accept the love that you think you deserve, and so I think if you are 
entering into the dating market with a low self-esteem, with a low expectation of what you as a person are worth and what you as a result deserve, then of course you are going to attract people who don't treat you with love, with respect, or give you the kind of attention that you as a living, loving human being with needs deserves. It is up to you to decide whether or not he gets you. I think we've almost forgotten nowadays. It's up to you to decide whether or not he gets you. You are the person who ultimately gets to decide if, I'm sorry to be like biological here, but if he gets to carry on his genes, you are the person standing in between him and reproducing and it is only your standards that prevent you from being used in that way, from being seen as just something casual, when most likely most people at their core want to be in loving, healthy relationships. And the thing that stops you from achieving that is low self-esteem, is low self-worth. But the good thing is that that is so entirely within your control. I'm not saying it's easy at all to work on yourself and to improve your self-esteem, but take it from someone who has pulled themselves out of rock bottom. It is difficult, but it is so, so worth it. I, for example, had a situation recently where I was treated with disrespect by a person that I considered a romantic interest. The second that happened, I said goodbye. That was it. They showed me who they were and they were gone. Now in the past, I've definitely taken on a more sort of chasing mindset in relationships and thought to myself, oh, how can I change their mind? What can I do to make them treat me right? How can they see that I'm worthy of love? And the truth is you can never convince anyone to treat you right. Either they will or they won't. That is entirely up to them. That is one of the things that you can't control. The only thing that you can control is your reaction and who you allow into your life, what kind of behavior you tolerate. I think I've seen this a lot in the Discord as well. We have this one channel called like Relationship Advice or something and people go there and they, you know, talk about their potential partners or their partners and they say, why do they treat me like this? Why am I not getting the love that I feel that I want or deserve? And the truth is, I think very often you go to your friends for advice in this kind of situation. You want to hear their opinion, but you already know, I think, in your heart of hearts that you're not being treated the way that you should be. It's just difficult in itself to detach from someone that you place so much romantic potential into. It's so tempting to, you know, visualize everything working out and being so beautiful and having the kids in the house and the whatever else, but you have to have a level of detachment and to prioritize your own self-respect above everything else because ultimately it's you who decides what kind of future you are going to experience. If you choose someone or pursue people who don't treat you with respect, that is the future that you are going to create for yourself. If you pick a kind, a loving partner, someone who is hardworking and ambitious and wants to look after you, then those standards are what you are going to get. Of course, it's hard to uphold those standards, but it is worth it if you want to create a life that doesn't feel lacking in that sense. I think that's all I really have to say for today. God bless and goodbye.